All right, fellow Slayers, it's time for the final episode of episode review of the day, which is Earshot. While on patrol, Buffy fights two mouthless demons. One man chooses to escape, but Buffy slays the other. Meanwhile, some of the demon's blood is absorbed into her hand. The next day at the library, the Scooby gang gather for another group meeting, where they find that Giles is making little to no progress with the mayor and has no clue where the ascension is. Wesley soon arrives, promising new updates, but his information is exactly the same as Giles's. Willow and Buffy talk about Angel's recent acting as solace to get close to Faith. Buffy's worried that he and Faith may have gotten more intimate than she saw. Will suggests that Buffy talk to Angel and straighten things out. Percy arrives, telling Willow that they'll have to reschedule their planned study session. Will then talks to Buffy about the basketball game held after school that day. Apparently, everyone except for Buffy is going. Buffy smells the right persistent itching on her hand and decides to talk to Giles. After a little research, he tells her that the demon's blood might have affected her with an aspect of the demon. Later that day, Sandra, Willow, Oz, and absent minded Buffy watch a pep rally, where Willow catches Buffy feeling her head for horns. Willow further horrifies her by wondering if the demon is male. That night, Buffy meets Angel during her usual patrol and tells him about the demon. Angel tells her that, he's, that he'll still love her no matter what she looks like. The exact wording only freaks her out even more. The next day at school, Buffy finds the rest of them excited about the game from the day before. When Cordelia passes by, <clears throat> Buffy hears Sandra wondering if she and Wesley had out her kiss before. She responds to him aloud and remarks that Buffy read his mind. Buffy then walks through the school halls, where she finally realizes she's hearing people's thoughts. Freaked out, she talks to Giles about her new ability and realizes that, that the mouthless demons are telepathic. Buffy seems overjoyed about it, and Giles says that this power may be very useful in combat. Buffy can resist to use it to her, to use it to her advantage in class first, though. During class at literature, she answers the teacher's questions with difficulty, pressing the rest of the students, and especially the teacher. Buffy then hears the thoughts of Freddie Freddy Iverson, who writes editorials for the school newspaper, and has a seriously negative opinion about everything and everybody at Sunnydale High School. Later that evening, Buffy visits Angel at the mansion and attempts to use her writing abilities on him to discover what really happened with Faith. Angel realizes what she's trying to do and tells her she won't be able to read his thoughts. She reassures her that what happened with Faith meant nothing and that in 243 years, he's only ever loved Buffy. Aww. The gang meets up at the library the next morning, where Buffy tells her friends about her new power. She finds in her constantly thinking about sex and mostly keeps thinking about Cordelia. Oz thinks extremely deep thoughts, and Willow is upset because Buffy has access to Oz's mind and learn more than learn more about him than she ever will. While well, in the school cafeteria, Buffy's telepathy starts to become painful, and the voices become too much for her to endure. Out of nowhere, a single menacing voice stands out among, stands out among the pandemonium. This time tomorrow, I'll kill you all. Buffy passes out, overwhelmed with the cacophony of others' thoughts. When she regains consciousness, Buffy tells the Scooby to interrogate everyone in the cafeteria in order to find out, figure out who the killer is. Giles tries to find a cure for Buffy, but before she leaves to rest at home, she hears the painful truth. She'll go insane if the telepathy continues. At home, while trying to comfort Buffy, Joyce inadvertently, Joyce inadvertently lets slip through her thoughts that she and Giles had sex on the hood of a police car under the influence, under the influence of the band Candy. Twice. Meanwhile, the rest of the gang starts interrogating members of the faculty and the students. They make a little progress with their research and like every likely suspects are crossed out, except for Freddy, who Oz can't seem to find. In the meantime, Joss and Wesley had come across a potential cure for Buffy's telepathic abilities that requires the heart of the second demon the second remaining demon. Angel has sent the demon to the cemetery and successfully acquires the heart. He brings the ingredients needed for the spell to Buffy's house. The next morning, forces her to drink it, telling her that it's okay and he's here to help. And he's there to help to help her. Buffy's body soon undergoes convulsion and convulsions. The angel calls for Giles. Then she loses consciousness. Moments later, she wakes up again, good as new, and heads to the school to straighten the mess out. Meanwhile, the Scooby's finally caught Freddy in his office, where they realize that he isn't the killer. Rather, he's been avoiding Oz out of fear of fear of retaliation for a negative review he had written about Jean Go Save My Baby. Oz isn't mad at all. He remains, he remains calm, saying, No, that's fair. 
Bobby shows up just as Cordelia finds a letter on Freddy's desk from Jonathan, an ignored and disregarded student, announcing a dire plan. The gang splits up to look for Jonathan. Meanwhile, Jonathan loads a firearm, ready to pull the trigger up in the high school clock tower. Buffy locates him and coolly jumps into the tower to confront him. Jonathan remains hostile at first, claiming that he is tired of everybody disregarding him for his small size and his lack of abilities. Buffy civilly talks to him, telling him that the reason everybody ignores him is that they have their own problems to deal with. Using how deafening silence can truly be, the two said to the people milling below. Buffy, Je Buffy gently prompts Jonathan to hand the rifle over to her, which she does with quiet, subdued grace. Buffy disposes of the weapon, but since surprised to learn Hannah put and surprised to learn he hadn't planned to murder anyone. He had actually gone to the tower. He had actually gone to the tower to kill himself. Elsewhere, Sanders looking for Jonathan in the cafeteria, and while picking up some, and while picking up some Jello, looks up and sees over a lunch lady putting rat poison into the students' food. They stare at each other for a few seconds, where Sanders runs out and warns everybody to stop eating their lunch. The lunch lady pursues him and tries to attack Xander with a cleaver. Buffy shows him in time, knocks the weapon out of her hands. The lunch lady calls the students vermin, always eating and never stopping. Buffy decides that the lunch lady has lost her mind and knocks her unconscious. The next day, Giles and Buffy discuss the recent adventure. Buffy is relieved not having any voices in her head. Jonathan has some repercussions to deal with, but Buffy seems confident of his recovery, even dreading he might ask her to the prom. Going over business as usual, Giles asks her if she's up for some training, and Buffy agrees. She then remarks, we can work out after school. We can work out after school. If you're not too busy having sex with my mother. Giles walks straight into a tree. <laughs> wow. So now let's take a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. When Buffy learns that she will gain an aspect of the demon, she checks for horns and a tail. This is exactly what her deal would check for when she wakes up after being made part demon at birthday. This episode marks the second time that Will interrogates Jonathan, the first having been in Go Fish. While interrogating him, she asks, if he ever had, she asks if he has ever had a fantasy about being powerful or respected. Later on, Jonathan will cast a spell to make this fantasy come true and superstar. He later talks to Xander about being openly gay, referring to the time he revealed his sexual orientation to Xander in phases. It's revealed that vampires are immune to having their thoughts read via telepathy. However, in future episodes, the vampires can be read by empathy and can receive projected thoughts. Hmm. Buffy asks if the whole Faith Angel thing was for nothing, referring to Angel pretending to turn evil in order to get info from Faith about the Ascension in the previous episode. Percy will talk about her study session. She began tutoring him in doppelgangerland. Buffy discovers Joyce and Giles had sex in the episode Band Candy. And flooded, Jonathan resists killing Buffy because she has saved his life a bunch of times, such as in this episode. She will later save him Superstar, also saving this whole school in episodes such as Bad Eggs, Dead Man's Party, Graduation Day Part 2, etc. Xander's offhanded comment about the lunch lady wanting to kill the students proves to be true. He'll unexpectedly be right once again about the Brooks Letterman jacket in the episode, Him. Buffy says that Jonathan looks like he's going to ask her to prom, but he's like three feet tall. In the prom, Jonathan has a day taller than Buffy. Huh. You key then? So now let's take a look at some production notes from this episode. Joss Whedon wrote two scenes in this episode. The discussion... Sorry, hold on just a second. There we go, sorry about that. Okay. Joss Whedon wrote two scenes in this episode. The discussion in the literature class and the confrontation in the clock tower between Buffy and Jonathan. In Esperson's first draft, Buffy's class discussed Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, but Whedon suggested writing a scene that related to Buffy's feelings. Esperson then changed it to an English class discussing the Catcher in the Rye, but Whedon rewrote the final version of the scene to, to be about Othello. Esperson says she deliberately confirmed that Joyce and Giles had sex and banned candy. Quote, to my surprise, a lot of people were confused about exactly how far Giles and Joyce had gone, and so I really enjoyed this as an opportunity to make very clear that they actually had sex on top of that police car. I just sort of wanted America to know that. Freddie Iverson was originally in Freddie Munson in the script. 
Hold on a minute. What is with this ad coming up? Ah. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. In Kongli rhyming slang, a word is replaced by a rhyming word, usually part of a two for part of a two word phrase. For example, apples is referred to as stairs as in apples and pears. Burke comes from the rhyming pair Berkeley Hunt. So when Joss calls Wesley Burke, he's actually calling him something a lot more offensive. However, the etymology of the term is now completely lost on anyone using it in Britain and it's entirely inoffensive. It really just means twit. Hmm. And I'll take a look at a broadcast note. This episode's subject matter, in conjunction with the mass shooting at Columbine High School, which occurred a week before the intended air date for this episode, let the, w to let the WB to postpone this episode's broadcast. The episode finally aired on September 21st, 1999, two months after the season three finale. And now let's take a look at some pop culture references. Buffy mention, mentions that the itchy hand is just another problem for the good people of Lubriderm, referring to the brand of body lotions made by the Warner Lambert Pharmaceutical Company. Buffy discusses the tragedy of Othello in literature class. Buffy says that Principal Snyder has the 1986 song Walkley an Egyptian by the Bengals stuck in his head. Oz's thoughts, I am my thoughts, if they exist in her, Buffy contains everything that is me, and she, th and she becomes me, I cease to exist. It's a reference to the first principle of René Descartes' philosophy, I think, therefore I am. And now finally, let's take a look at a couple goofs. The first time Buffy looks at the clock to her sees Jonathan, the clock reads 1240. Seconds later, when she has another look, the clock is showing 1210. The sign for Torrance High Administration is visible on one of the buildings during the final scene when Buffy and Giles are, talking, are, are walking outside of Sunnydale High. Hmm. So overall, I think this episode is pretty interesting, and yeah, I kind of wish that maybe Buffy had found a way to keep her telepathy permanently, but unfortunately that did not end up happening, so there you go. So overall, I give Earshot three vampire stakes out of five. Well, anyway, tune in this coming Friday as we take a look at the next episode, Choices. So, until then, here endeth the lesson.